Hello, good evening. Uh, welcome to Kachaksa Night. Hello. Uh, a whole lot of uh, young people. So, that's the only young speaker I know. Anyway, this is going to be hectic because, can I turn this on? Okay, it's going to be 100 years in six minutes. <laughs> the hostage fiasco last Monday captured the world's attention for 11 painful hours. The what and why of the tragedy is still being debated. As an urbanist, I was intrigued by where it unfolded. The Quirino grandstand in Luneta, the doomed principal actor in the drama, surely chose it because it was the grandest stage available to him and his generation. The site has been the setting of choice for presidential inaugurations, people visits, and tele-evangelists, basically your sinners, saints, and charlatans. <laughs> this was born of a tradition set late in the Spanish period when the Luneta was the place to see and be seen at, where one was well healed or summarily killed. In 1904, when the Americans took over, they hired the famous American planner and architect, Daniel Burnham. Oh, I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> yes, he made Luneta, because he saw it was open and spacious, the center of his master plan for the colonial capital. A mirror of the larger one he just completed in Washington, D.C. in uh, 1901. Their focal point was a tall obelisk honoring a great military hero and first president, Washington. Ours was a squat monument to a pacifist doctor with a fetish for overcoats. <laughs> <laughs> Burnham's plan began by moving the old Luneta promenade 300 meters forward. The new Luneta was not intended to be a park but the civic complex of several buildings, including a large capital. But before any building was completed, America pursued an exit strategy. Yes, we were the first Iraq. And the Philippine government, as usual, ran out of money. I'm ahead of myself again. <laughs> That's the new capital, which was never built, which is where the Agrippina now is, and that ridiculous Lapu Lapu statue. <laughs> I'm Cebuano, but they still call it. Anyway, <laughs> despite this, the new Luneta became the city's main public space in the 1920s. Carriages gave way to cars and carnivals. Weekends were special with concert by the famous world-renowned Philippine constabulary band led by the colorful Captain Walter Loving, an African-American. I plan to have Jamie Foxx uh, play him in the script I'm writing. The fellow reportedly died uh, saving a, uh, a Filipina hostage in the liberation of Manila. Any filmmakers out there, I, I'm, I can write the script for you. In 1937, in 1937, the site at Luneta hosted the 37th International Eucharistic Congress, an international event. Juan Arellano designed the temporary altar, stage, and tower, and over 250 people attended, about 90% of uh, Manila at the time. President Quezon of the new Commonwealth did not attend. He, was, he had a fight with the church at the time, and he was also a little tired of Manila, and he was busy toying with the idea of moving the capital elsewhere. Also, some say because of speculative uh, real estate. The selected site was the huge Tuason estate to the east of Manila, you can see there, brought, uh, bought at the extravagant sun, sum of five centavos per square meter. I wish I was there. The city was to be built around a huge 400 hectare green quadrangle and 25 hectare ellipse that was to house our national capital with a grand fla uh, plaza flanked by a new Malacanang and a justice complex. The foundations of the capital were actually built as well as two buildings at the university of, new University of the Philippines, Diliman. Uh, but of course, war intervened, uh, Japan invaded. But, 
I should have written more. <laughs> but we were prepared. <laughs> this shows the Philippine, Philippine Constabulary. <laughs> this shows the Philippine Constabulary in 1941, probably the last time our police and armed forces were completely equipped. <laughs> note the gas mask, and note, note the gas mask and the state of the art fit helmets. One of our legacies to the world, at least according to Wikipedia. <laughs> I'm reviving the helmet manufacturer and I have a, a handsome model which I'm going to call the brand. <laughs> Moving on. MacArthur escaped but promised to return. He did so in 1945, employing brute force to retake the city. Here is a 500 pound bomb delicately making its way down to Luneta and the Intramuros, where the Japanese held 4,000 Filipinos hostages before killing a thousand. But having won the war, the Americans gave us independence because it was cheaper than having to rebuild the country at the cost of billions. <laughs> Filipinos celebrated nevertheless with a ceremony on the 4th of July, very American. An ornate but temporary grandstand was built, not at the wa water side, as most people uh, think, but at the foot of the Rizal Monument. Americans paid us mostly in, in used equipment, like jeeps, hence the jeepney. A devastated Manila left little choice but to rebuild in the new capital, Quezon City. The original quadrangle was thought to be too flat to be defensible, so they moved to Novaliches. Another grand plaza with three branches of government was envisioned. Work started, but yet again the government ran out of funds. A grand avenue, you can see there, was planned with commercial establishments on either side, but the government failed to build it, so the Ayalas did it with Ayala Avenue. The government considered 16 other capital sites, including Baguio, Tagaytay, and Cebu, and others. They even tried the geographical center of the Philippines, which turned out to be in the Visayas, next to a then unknown island called Boracay. <laughs> but it had no water, electricity, or airport, although since then it has improved, improved slightly. <laughs> the country and city recovered. To make up for an unbuilt capital, the old buildings at the Luneta were repaired and a permanent grandstand named after President Corino was finally built to replace the yearly temporary ones. But with not enough funds, only the central part was built and it gained its swing slowly after the years. In 1960, they took down the, the, the arch, the, the, the thing behind because they thought it was too old. But that's the genesis of that. Luneta fell to disrepair until the planned Rizal Bird Centennial in 1961. A makeover new buildings were planned for the historic site, including a memorial cultural theater. But only a library was built, the natural, National Library, as not enough money was raised. A few years later... Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. This is the 1953 Manila International Fair. We had an international fair 50 years ahead of Shanghai. Oh, this is it. I jumped one. Um, in 1961, there was a centennial uh, theater that was supposed to be built at the Luneta. Uh, they didn't generate enough funds, so the Ayala once again picked it up and built it as the Rizal Theater at the Makati Commercial Center. Some of you will remember this before 1990. A few years later, the Luneta recovered again with the efforts of columnist Doroy Valencia. The Carino Grandstand was refurbished and new playgrounds and amenities built. Today, a bulky aquarium has commandeered the site leading at the waterside, leading to the loss of the famous Manila Sunset, as well as priceless sculptural playgrounds designed by national artist Napoleon Agueva. They just tore it down. In the mid-70s, Marcos re revived the project to, rebuild a, uh, to build a set, government center in Novaliches, but ended up building only the Batasan Pambansa, which is now surrounded by 100,000 squatters. He did consider another site beside the cultural center, but once again, the government ran out the funds, and today it's the site of the Mall of Asia. <laughs> Malls spell the death of public plazas and parks, it took the murder of Nino Yukino to enable large public spaces to be of value by empowering a people long held hostage by an unjust regi regime. It started with Nino's casket pass passing through Luneta in 83 and ended with the Etza revolution. We only leave the comfort of the malls every time we have to oust somebody. Since then, 
we have struggled to rebuild the institutions needed to, be, to have to develop a strong nation. Our government is as fractured as this capital metropolis which has grown without order or a center or a soul. Citizens just barely survive in spite of crime, floods, brownouts, inept policemen, pollution, politics, and Chris Aquino. <laughs> in the last hundred years, we have paraded our national colors at the Luneta with pride. This is from 1946. Lately, we have lost connection with that central place since many of us are scattered all over the world. And the leaders we choose are scattered brain. <laughs> City planning or any other kind of planning is non-existent. Everybody wants to be the boss, but no one wants to be accountable for anything. So what are our marching orders now? And on that positive note, thank you very much.